Hello fellow Sudokans and welcome to Zen and the Art of the Guardian Sudoku Puzzle for Friday the 28th of January 2022 the end of the Monday to Friday working week if that's what you are if that's what you are into or if that's what you are forced to do whichever way your life is working out for retired people I guess um, doesn't make much difference I suppose um, Right, uh, it's the second of our hard level days at the Guardian Sudoku puzzle, so we'll get onto that in just a second. Uh, what's happening in the news? I see the Guardian has a report from Arizona, uh, from Phoenix specifically, uh, about um, the intense heat and how they're trying to solve the problems there. Uh, apparently, in 2020, 200 people died uh, from the excessive heat. Uh, they had 53 days over the temperature of 43 degrees that's centigrade celsius they i know they don't i know they still use fahrenheit in america but um i think uh, most of the world is uh, better with the c scale right um anyway very hot <laughs> very very hot um and uh so they've uh, appointed a four-person team to try and deal with it they're going to um plant trees and paint the streets with reflective paint and stuff like that all seem like good ideas one part of the problem though is that some people can't afford to run their air conditioning or repair their air conditioning so of course poverty uh, as always plays a part in this kind of thing you know people have enough money to do stuff and of course climate change means that it means that the situation is getting worse all the time um, they didn't mention about reflective paint on people's houses I think that's uh, an important step they talked about it on roads, but I think uh, reflective paint on people's houses is definitely worth investigating um, because it might mean uh, um, that they need to use less energy in terms of uh, cooling their houses and that in turn could reduce global warming. So, um, you know, I think that's uh, certainly something we need to look into. Maybe that should be subsidized across the world, really. Um, okay, what else? Uh, oh yeah, I was just thinking, the first time I ever uh, encountered a temperature over 40 degrees or well over 40 degrees was when I, was, when I arrived in India in 1987, there was a heat wave and I arrived from London where it was pretty cold and uh, uh, it was uh, um, just horrible weather in London. I arrived in India in New, De in New Delhi and it was 44 degrees and it was outrageous and I was staying with a family and the people that I stayed with uh, wouldn't go outside and in fact hardly anybody went outside uh, and the rain was was late it was um, you know like weeks late or something like that and uh, so it, for several days I just lay under this kind of uh, air conditioning and trying to breathe it was incredibly stifling I'd never encountered it before in my life of course now after more than 30 years living in thailand i'm quite used to it but <laughs> although we don't normally have temperatures quite that hot uh, i do remember when the rain actually arrived everybody went out and stood in the rain it was quite a, quite a thing to actually stand in the rain and cool down when the rain finally arrived that's a great memory i have of india back from 1987 Right, okay, how do we play this game of Sudoku? Well, it's not a really difficult game to play uh, at most levels. It can be excruciatingly difficult at the expert levels. Um, but uh, this is unlikely to be so because it's the Guardian. They generally tend not to be that difficult. But anyway, let's explain the rules first of all. The concept is we have a grid of nine squares by nine squares, cross and down. And we also have nine squares within these outlined sections that we refer to as blocks or boxes or I don't know, whatever you want to call them really. Areas, regions, zones, etc. You choose your synonym. I generally call them blocks. Most people do, I think. Um, and we fit the numbers one to nine because there are nine squares in rows, columns and blocks and that's it. So what's more important is to decide how we actually find these numbers. How do we go about finding them? So what we need to do is let's say let's target this block up here and say it only has one and three so we have to get all of the other numbers. In particular I want you to notice five. Now we have to look outside this box 
because we need to look at what's intersecting with and interacting with the squares within this box. So this 5 blocks up this column, meaning 5 cannot reappear in any of these squares because it's already in this column. And the same applies to this 5 here, except we're talking about this column, of course, so no 5 can be in, in, in either of these two squares. So 5 blocking up here, 5 blocking up here. And then this 5 in this row means that this square is also blocked. Now it blocks these two squares, but these are already blocked by this 5, so it's irrelevant. But we have a kind of blocking pattern up here, up here, and across here. And if you'll see that, you know, if you look at it, that means that there's only this square, which is not affected by an intersecting 5. And so we can immediately know that that is, in fact, a 5, because this puzzle has a unique solution. There is only one answer to it. And therefore, we know that 5 fits in there. And that's something to remember. If you find one empty square where the number can go, and only one empty square, then you must write that number in immediately because you have found the solution to that particular square. Got it? Okay. Um, now let's take the 5 blocking down here this time, and this 5 blocking across here, and this 5 blocking across here. So blocked, blocked, and blocked. So again, you'll see just this square where a 5 can go. Now we have 8 blocking down this column here, 8 blocking down here, so an 8 can fit into that square there, can and in fact must fit there. Okay, sometimes it's good to think ahead a couple of steps. So I want to show you something now. Uh, this 9 blocks up this column here and 9 blocks across here. So we are limited to just these two squares, right? 9 blocking up here and 9 across here. Now we can't say which of, it, which of these squares the 9 appears in because we don't have any other information yet. Uh, but we do know it appears either here or here. So that will block across this row. This 9 blocks across this row. And therefore, 9 must appear in that square there, can't go anywhere else. Uh, again, likewise, thinking ahead a little bit, three blocks across this row here, so three is in one of these two squares, right? Which one? Don't know, don't care, just yet. Well, all we care about is that it blocks down this column here and three blocks down this column here. And so we can say that 3 must fit into that square there. Uh, we also know that 8 blocks across here. So 8 is in these squares. Now it's kind of interesting and important in Sudoku. <laughs> in Sudoku to understand when we have a pair of numbers like this exclusively 8 and 3 we know that only 8 and 3 go in these two squares we don't have to look for other numbers within those squares now we know that this is 8 over 3 and the other numbers go along there we'll talk about that in a minute but the 8 certainly blocks here or here blocks down this column and all the way down here so 8 is disallowed from these two squares and 8 blocks across here so 8 fits into that square there Now, 9 blocks up here, 9 blocks up here, so that's got to be a 9 there. Nine blocks across this row, nine blocks across this row, and nine blocks down here as well. So we can find 9 there. You need to look all around the board. No good just uh, keeping your eyes stuck in one location. You, it's important to remember to uh, look around the different parts of the board um, while you're playing. Um, well, of course, not what <laughs> it wouldn't be. <laughs> it wouldn't be uh, very fruitful to look around while you're not playing, would it? <laughs> it's a waste of time. You must be playing the game, of course.
Um, okay, uh, three blocks across here and three blocks down here. So three is in one of these squares, rather like we did with the nines over here before. Three is in one of these two squares, right? Don't know which one, but it blocks across here anyway, and there's three blocks across here. So we're sure that three fits into that square there. Um, six blocks up this column, six blocks up this column, six blocks across there. So six fits into that square. Now we can say six blocking across this row, across this row, six fits there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> right, now if you remember, we know that this was eight and three. So we can say for sure what these two numbers are. Now, not necessarily we can place them, but we do know what the numbers are, and therefore we can get this final digit. Let me show you what I mean. 8 and 3 are here, right? So for this block, we still need 4 and 7. So we know that 4 and 7 must be in these two squares. Still can't place them yet, but we know 4 and 7 are in these two squares. Okay, so knowing that's 4 and 7, what number do we need to complete this row? Well, we still need a 2, and that will complete it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so the Two will go there. Um, this row uh, along the bottom here, uh, we have three empty squares, therefore we have three missing numbers, so we should investigate what they are. Um, two, four, and seven, is that right? Oh, actually, two, four, and seven, I think, are the missing numbers. We've got one, we don't have two. We've got three, no four. Five, six, no seven. Right, so 2, 4, and 7 are the missing numbers from in these three squares. Right Now, let's look at this square and say, can it be a 2? Uh, yeah, no limitation. Can it be a 4? No, because we have a 4 in this block already, or we have a 4 up here, whichever way you want to look at it. So it's not a 4. Can it be a 7? No, because we have 7 interacting here. So if it's not 7 and it's not 4, then it's got to be 2. Now, now we're left with two empty squares, right, which are 4 and 7, since we just remembered 2, 4, and 7. Now, this 7 clearly stops this from being 7. So 7 fits here, and 4 is in that square there. <coughs> now, do you remember the three, uh, the 4 and the 7 up here? This was 8 and 3, right? And we said we have 4 and 7 here. So now this 4 means that that can't be 4. So the 4 goes there, and the 7 is there. Seven blocks down here, seven blocks up here, seven blocks across here. That's a space for seven. The only number we need for this column is eight. So let's put it in. Uh, the missing numbers across here are two and four. We've got one, three, there's no two or four. We've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the four blocks that square there, so this is our 4 and this is our 2 now, meaning this can't be 2. So 2 appears in that square, 1 appears in that square. Uh, this row does not yet have a 3, but we see an intersecting 3 here, meaning that can't be 3. And another intersecting 3 here, 
that can't be 3, so if it's not here and not there, it's got to be there. Now our two blocks across this row here, so we don't yet have a 2 in this block, we do now. And the 2 blocking up here, 2 down here, that's a 2 there. one num uh, empty space here, so one number missing in this row, it's an 8, let's fill that in now. One uh, empty square here, it took me a while, <laughs> didn't notice that one. One empty square here, uh, we don't yet have a one in this column, so let's place it now. There you go. Now, one across here and one up here means that that must be a one there. The two blocks across this row, so we can place a two in this square, and two blocking up here, two blocking up here, and two across there means that that has to be a two in that square there. Four blocks up this column, four blocks up this column. We don't yet have a four in this block. Let's place it there. We don't yet have a seven in this column, so seven immediately intersects there, and so we know seven must be here. And now to complete this column, we still need a six. So let's put in 6 also blocks this square here, so that's a 6. And we need a 3 in this block to finish, stopping this three from be, this square from becoming a 3. 3 goes there, and an 8 will finish that block there. 8 also blocks up there, give it an 8 here. Or you could just count through and find that the 8 is the number that's missing. Whichever way you do it, you get the same answer. Missing numbers here are 7 and 9. We can't quite place them yet, so we have to look elsewhere. Missing numbers here are 5 and 6, I do believe. So 6 stops that square there from being a 6. 6 must be here, and 5 will be there now. 5 blocking across here, 5 up here, 5 fits there. One number missing from this row, it's a 7. Let's place the 7 in. Now we have 7 from down here blocking up this column, 7 blocking up this column, so 7 is there. And now we know this can't be 7, this must be 7. And the last number that we need to complete this block or this column is 9, whichever way you look at it. You can see the 9 is going up there, or you can count through and come to the same conclusion. Uh, right, almost done now, almost there, one blocks across here, or one blocks up there, so that's a one, and then we bring that down here. This is not a one for sure, one is there, four has to go in that square there, and then for this column, we are still lacking a nine, I think. There we go, uh, we're lacking one digit in this column as well. Uh, is it a four? I do believe it is a 4. We don't yet have a 4, so 4 goes there. And now to complete this, uh, what do we need? We still need a 9. Uh, 9, yeah, that looks to be right. Okay. Uh, so, almost there now. Uh, missing numbers up here. Well, here and here are 3 and 4. So we see an intersecting 4 here. So the 4 is there. 3 is there, meaning this can't be 3. So 3 is there. And to finish today's uh, so-called hard level game, actually easy, really a very easy game, definitely not a hard level game at all, um, as I half suspected before beginning, um, but um, now confirmed. Uh, it was an 8. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, if you want to try tougher stuff, come back later in the day for the uh, New York Times and the Los Angeles Times, which are generally much more difficult. 
and uh, that's it. I'm off to breakfast now. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.